Welcome back to another episode of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm your host, Susie Selleck, here today in Aurora, Indiana, at the Aurora First Presbyterian Church. I'm joined by Fee Ellinghausen. Fee, thank you for joining us. Thanks for coming. So this is a beautiful church. So where do we get started talking about this beautiful First Presbyterian Church? The church with a steeple and the town clock is a landmark, a focal point in the city of Aurora, and you can see it blocks away. The beautiful Greek Revival Church stands on the corner of 4th and Main Street on higher ground. During the 37 flood, it was high enough to, to be above the water line so that it served as a refuge for the city. And before you enter the church, be sure to look at the wrought iron gates at the foot of the steps and at the old wall with the Kenilworth ivy on it. And at the plaque on the front of the church, we are so proud that we are on the National Register of Historic Places. History in your own backyard loves that you guys have that plaque, which is great. Congratulations. So proud. Yeah. Uh, you and I, we were walking and we were talking earlier in the church. We went up these beautiful staircases. Just touch on those really quick. I thought it was neat what we talked about. It is a beautiful entrance to the church, to the sanctuary, to the second floor. And at Christmas time, we have so much fun winding the greens around the stairway as decoration for Christmas time. Yep. It's beautiful now. I can only imagine how pretty it is. V, when was the first Presbyterian church built? The first Presbyterian church was established in 1844. Uh, the excavation for the grounds was in 1848, and the basement of the church was built in 1850. And services were held downstairs for five years until the upstairs, the sanctuary, and the tower, the steeple, and the town clock were built in 1855. The building was designed by J.R. Hamilton, an architect from Cincinnati, and was dedicated in 1856. The front of the church, the exterior, uh, changed a little bit when the front door was changed in the mid-1990s. And the Gaff family of Hill Forest was instrumental in the beginnings of our church. B, can you talk to us a little bit about the beautiful, we were in it earlier, about the beautiful sanctuary. There are so many interesting things in the sanctuary, gifts from generations past. First, you notice the beautiful ceiling and the molding and the north and south arches. The stained glass windows were given by members in the past and they were dedicated in 1928. The two chandeliers in the center of the sanctuary were originally gas lights and were electrified in 1914. The busts on those are of Mary and of Jesus. The pews are original to the church and they have doors on them that you could close to keep people warm or they might have given the church some income as families would reserve their own pews. The pulpit and the settee behind it are original to the church. And the door at the far right is relatively new. It was added during the 20th century as an additional place to assist people who didn't want to go up the stairs. And unfortunately, so that we were able to get caskets in. We were walking through the sanctuary earlier and I'll admit my favorite thing is the organ. And I think that's something that you can talk a lot about. My favorite too. Actually, this is the second organ for the church. When the church was built, it couldn't afford an organ. But it just so happened that in 1860, a flatboat carrying a pipe organ to St. Louis wrecked on the Aurora shore. And we bought that organ and placed it at the back of the sanctuary under the north arch. And it had to be pumped, of course, and we used that for 45 years. Then in 1906, the new and present organ was installed at the front of the sanctuary. It's a Marshall Bennett pipe organ with 11 ranks and 564 speaking pipes. All the facade pipes sound except the far two on the right and the left. It was pumped by hand until it was electrified. And even after that time, it had to be pumped by hand because sometimes the electricity went out. Right. The organ console was in the center of that organ, but in 1970, it was moved down to where you see it right now. We've used this Marshall Bennett pipe organ for 150 year, 115 years, and it makes a beautiful sound.
I'm also a really big fan of the windows, the way that those are nicely framed. And I think those are, you know, nice little treasures, little ads to the sanctuary. Talk to us about some other things outside of the sanctuary. Well, below the sanctuary is the narthex, or, it's the, or the entry hall, with dual staircases that we've talked about that go up. There is a World War I service flag with the names of members who served in that war on the wall. And there's a display case displaying the first Bible of the church dated 1856 and a communion set dated 1880. Then, of course, there's the town clock. When the church was built, the city thought our church was so beautiful that it put the town clock in our steeple. And they maintained that until 1981 when they gave it to the church. We maintain it now, and it was electrified, digitalized in 2016. Then inside that is the Bethany room. It's an all-purpose room where we have dinners, movies, wedding receptions. And it is rumored that during the Civil War, the building was used as a way station for the Underground Railroad. And there is a closet that was supposed to be used for that purpose. Oh, cool. And of course, the early church didn't have a kitchen. The okay. kitchen that we have now was remodeled in 2017. The education building adjoining the church was built in 1959, and it houses the church offices, restrooms, and classrooms. Beautiful day here, and we are standing if I'm correct, in the Memorial Garden. And I would love for you to talk to us about it. We are. The Memorial Garden and Memorial Wall was dedicated in 2009. It stands where a church manse and a Sunday school building stood years ago. The bench in the garden was the original front step of our church. And the granite faced Memorial Wall has space for over 200 inscriptions. Names could be members or friends of the church or anyone in the community and ashes have been scattered at the base of the wall, but you can't bury them there. The garden's beautiful at all times of year, whether it's the pink dogwood blooming, the snow, or the hydrangea that's in full bloom now. Yeah. Beautiful place, very peaceful place. Very peaceful, perfect place for an interview, perfect place to grab some peace too, right? Exactly, thank you. The, you have a very vested history in this church. We were talking and you know this church very well, super active member what what about this church what's so special what's next we've talked a lot about the history of the church and the gifts of past generations we're indebted to the founders of the church and to all those who have passed through these doors before us but we are still a vibrant church in the present we have church services every sunday morning at 10 30. there's still a lot of action going on in these historical walls <laughs> I think that's so true. Fee, thank you so much for your time today. I enjoyed it. Thank you. This is my happy place. Thank you for watching another episode of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm your host, Susie Selleck, here today in Aurora, Indiana, at the Aurora First Presbyterian Church. Joined, Fee, you were so lovely today. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for coming and visit us often. Yeah, and you almost got my logo. So I was going to say, remember... Travel, Travel slowly, slowly and stop, stop often. often. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.